Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Lords of Hellas, a game kind of in the same genre as uh, Blood Rage and Rising Sun and all that. It's a dudes on a map game uh, where we're going to be putting these miniatures on a map and moving them around and fighting and all of those wonderful, wonderful things. Now, as you can see, this is a big game. There's a lot of stuff off camera that it's not fitting in. The camera is as high as it's going to go. Um, so I'm going to do my very best to teach you how to play this game in a clear way and all of that stuff. Um, now in this game we are these two different teams. I'm going to be playing Heracles and Helen over here. So the blue team and the and the red team. So in a typical three or three or four, <laughs> like you need my fingers, right? In a typical three or four player game there are four ways to win the game. And I'm going to be doing a two-player game, but let's just talk about this for a second. So, uh, the first way that you can win the game is by controlling two different lands. Now, a land is all of the regions so of a color. So, a region is just this little spot right here, and a land is all of the regions of that color. So, here, the blue player is starting off the game uh, by controlling this blue region. And if they can control all of the blue regions, they control a land. And in the game, if you can control uh, two full lands, so let's say the blue is able to get all the blue and all of the yellow, then that would be the end of the game in a four-player game. Um, so, yeah, so you're basically trying to control lands. We'll keep it that simple. In a two-player game, you need to control three lands. So up here, the red player is starting with one red region. My strategy is to try to have them control the whole red region and then come down into the yellow and then come down into the blue. I'm going to try to have the blue player control this blue land, and then, I think I said region earlier, and then I'm going to have them meld down here into the black region and the green region. So, controlling things is an important thing. That's one victory condition. A second victory condition is we're going to be putting these temples on the board where you see kind of this artwork right here. We're going to be building temples. And if a player controls five regions with a temple, uh, then that is also going to be a victory. So, you know, one way to think about this is controlling land. You kind of want to amass everybody into these singular lands. Another thing is to be strategic and to pop up where there are these temples. You could see another one here, and that is uh, one right there too, and things like that. So you can control full lands. Or you can control regions with temples, or you can kill monsters. So it, there are a bunch of these cool big monsters on the board. If you can control, or if you can kill three monsters, then you will win the game immediately. And finally, uh, there are these monuments here. You might have thought that I didn't quite fully get this set up. But essentially, there are these three different statues on the board that start deconstructed. And as the game goes on, we're going to be constructing these monuments. And uh, uh, basically, if you can control the region where the monument is completed, so like right now, this monument is down here in this region. If, if you can control this region when this monument gets finished, more or less, you can win the game also. Now, this victory condition does not exist in a two-player game. I wanted to do a three-player game to give you a more standard version of the game. Um, unfortunately, I do not have the table space to make that happen. So, uh, let's just quickly recap. We are going to be going for uh, controlling lands. So, if we can control in a two-player game, if I can get my characters to control three complete lands, they will win. If I can get them to control five different um, regions with the temples, that's going to be a win. Or if I can get a character to kill three monsters, that's going to be a win. Or in a two-player game, you totally ignore the monument rule. But in a different game, the fourth condition is be in a region where the monument is completed. So let's just take a closer look at kind of what we've got going on the board, and I'm going to re-talk about those victory conditions again. So right now, we control this region, and the way that we came to control this region during setup was we were allowed to put our hero and these two soldiers. These soldiers are called hoplites, because they're going to refer to them that way on cards and stuff. So these hoplites ended up on this region. I just chose this region, and you could see right here on the board that there was a number two. All of these numbers on these regions, so there's a name of the region and these numbers, we'll talk about these symbols in a little bit, um, but basically 
these numbers are the general population. So I brought my army in and I was big enough that I was able to keep the population under control and that's why now I control that region. From here on out, this region is going to either be controlled by the blue player or the red player could come in and take control by having a fight. Um, but the reason why I mention that is the controlling the regions has absolutely nothing to do with your hero. Your hero cannot, like I can't move my hero up into a region and control it by any means. Heroes just kind of run around the city doing their thing. So uh, the way that I'm going to be able to control more regions is by moving these square base hoplites into a different region. If I move these hoplites over here, I'm going to be able to control that region. And the way that the red player is going to be able to control one of my regions, or the blue regions, is that they could move their guys in, and we could have a battle, and there's a chance that we would take this off, and the, the red player would control it. So, again, with that condition of controlling lands, uh, that's going to have 100% to do with moving these armies around. And I'll just briefly point out that moving your armies is going to come down to your hero's leadership number. So as we're trying to control these different lands, uh, the way that we're going to be able to move those armies around is by looking at this number under leadership. That's how our hero is going to be able to command those armies around. So you can see that having these soldiers out and about is going to be very important because that was two victory conditions, right? So one victory condition was to cover the whole uh, land with your hoplites, with your soldiers, in order to get control over them. Um, once you have control, like these guys could move and I still have control until the red player comes in or something like that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to try to move our soldiers around, take over the land, uh, either in big chunks or in terms of these temples. So like we may want to build these temples up like this, and that's going to have more to do with these round base figures. We'll talk more about that in a second, but uh, we have square base figures for controlling land. We're going to have these priests. They have a round base, and they're going to help us build temples, but also they're going to come over to the monuments and worship them and give us some special abilities for that. Um, but yeah, so in terms of controlling the land, that's what those guys are going to do. The hero has two main jobs. The hero is not going to be in charge of controlling places. They're going to be in charge of coming down here and fighting monsters. Uh, but the other thing that they're going to be in charge of is coming up here and going on these quests. So there are these cards up here that are green, and they're called quests. And these are going to give them different rewards. It's not a victory condition thing, but that's going to really help buff them up and give them some good rewards and stuff like that. So hoplites, they're in charge of controlling regions. Heroes are in charge of fighting the monsters. Here's another monster right here, because that's one of the victory conditions. Kill three monsters. And also, they can go on quests to help uh, make everybody stronger. Because you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And then finally, if you're playing a three or four player game, it's the actual player player that I like to say. The player is in charge of... Um, building the monuments. It's not the hoplites. It's not really the hero. Any player can help contribute build contribute to the building of any of the monuments, but you do want to get control over those by getting your hoplites over here and taking control of the different... Oh, it's off camera, but there is a number up here. There we go. There is a number associated with this place, which is also where that monument is being built. So, Keep in mind, in this game, <laughs> I know I'm saying this a lot, that's one of my teaching tips that's going to come up in the next video. Um, <clears throat> your hoplites are so important, they're crucial because you're trying to control lands. Either control two lands or three in a two-player game, or five temples, or you want to be in control of a spot when a monument gets completed. So having said that, we kind of have a pretty good idea of most of the things that are over here. We have a whole bunch of armies. You can see we don't have enough armies to actually cover all of those lands. We're going to have to be strategic in their movement, take over lands, and then move them off and hope that they are safe and protected. So we have a whole bunch of army figures. We now know what these are. These are control tokens. They're going to help us mark which cities we have control over or which regions. And then these are priests. We briefly talked about them. They're going to help us with the temple building, and they're going to go worship at the monuments. And when we do that, we're going to be gaining special abilities, primarily to raise these different statistics. So um, I just happen to be starting at two strength because I'm playing with Heracles over here. Uh, but most people will start kind of in the ones down here. And there are three different statistics that are kind of tracking all of the things that are happening. We already talked about the leadership statistic. This is over the number one. And that means that every turn, I'm going to be able to move one of my army dudes around the map. 
So if I wanted to move more in a single turn, I need to raise this up. If I could get it all the way up here, I can move five of these army dudes around the map at a time, which is really helpful. Strength is going to come uh, when we're fighting monsters is a good way. So remember I said our hero is going to be moving around fighting those monsters. We're trying to get three monsters by the end of the, or to end the game, right? And so this strength number is going to help with monster fighting, basically. Then speed is going to be how fast your hero can move around the board, how they can go from one region to the next. And really quickly, before we get into a turn sequence, I just want to recover the hero thing. So we've talked about the army thing enough, I think. Heroes are going to be moving around the board using that speed number, okay? They're going to be coming over here and fighting monsters with their strength. And then I talked about the cards in the top corner of the board, but the way to access those cards is to go to regions that have these cardboard tokens. So where I had pulled this green card before, aid to an atlas. If I want to do this card, I have to go to the region with this token. So I can move my hero down here, find this token, and he's going to be able to go on this quest. And you're going to notice there are these symbols up here on the quest. If I want to do this quest, I need to be pretty strong. So um, this is... Uh, an indicator, this is using those other indicators on the board. So like for example, I want to be strong to do this quest. Heracles is a pretty strong guy, so I'm going to probably be eyeballing that one. Or the other quest that's available right now has to do with speed. So if I can um, get a good amount of speed, then I'm going to be able to come on this quest over here. Okay, so I could clean the Augean stables. And to do that quest, I would have to just come up here. Okay, cool. I think we're almost ready to start talking about the turn structure. I just wanted to introduce the components to the board or that are on the board and in your play area and talk about the four main, uh, the four ways to win. And of course, in a two player game, there's only three ways to win. You need to control two lands, no, three lands in a two player game. You need to kill three monsters or you need to control five lands that have uh, temples on them. Temples are going to look like this. Now, before we dive into a turn structure, let me just quickly say that A, I am not going to pronounce things correctly. I have no clue how to pronounce most of these words on the board. I'm probably going to just say it whatever, like what the first thing that pops in my head, even if it sounds stupid. So that's the first thing. Number two, this is a big game. This has taken me a long time to prepare for, um, and I am probably going to make several mistakes. And I'm hoping that this video just gives you the vibe of the game. And uh, if you catch a mistake, I would love us to know. I want to add that into the subtitles of the video. So if you uh, cling on subtitles, if you catch a mistake, please leave me a timestamp. And I am going to be super happy to add some subtitles so that we can make sure that we're all learning how to play the game correctly. Number three is to know that with my videos, this is not a strategy guide. I am not going to be playing this game very wisely in the sense of like optimizing strategy. I'm still very new to this game and so I don't know the best strategies. I don't know all the best moves. I haven't gone to the best colleges. And so um, just be aware that this is not a strategy guide. This is just giving you the feel of how to play the game. So the blue player, Heracles' clan, uh, they're going to go with first and that's going to give me an opportunity to talk about what happens on a turn. So. It's going to feel like a lot is happening on a turn, and I'm going to try to make it simple because I actually think that once you've done one or two rounds that it is pretty simple. But basically, on a turn, uh, you're going to have two parts of your turn. You're going to be able to do a whole bunch of regular actions, and then after that, you're going to be able to do one special action, and you have to do that. So you're going to have the option to do as many of these actions in any order. Uh, you're going to be able to do them once. So I'm going to be able to move my hoplites. I'm going to be able to um, move my hero. I'm going to be able to uh, pray. We'll talk about that in a second. And to use artifacts. And you can do that once per turn. All of these can be done once per turn in any order. Um, and then we'll talk about special actions. So first thing we're going to do is talk about moving our hoplites. And to do that, remember, our leadership number helps us with that. So on the board, I'm going to be able to move one guy, one space. The rules for moving hoplites is simple. Hoplites can move one space. That's it. They can move one space in an adjacent, uh, to an adjacent region. So right now, I can take this guy and I could put them here, 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 here. And that's it, right? Those regions right there, the ones that are adjacent to this one. And 
And because my leadership number is one, I can only move one hoplite. So I just have to decide where I'm sending him. Um, there really aren't any other consequences to that movement until uh, you move into a space, like if, there, if red was down here, okay, and I move this guy up here, then there's going to be consequences to that movement. Otherwise, uh, we're going to be pretty clear to, do, to move however we want to. I don't really need to worry about the monsters. That's more of a hero thing. Uh, there could be consequences to moving into a space with a monster. We'll talk more about that later, but that's it. We just move one space, okay? So I just have to decide where do I want to send them. Um, there is one more but. Let's pretend that I had started over here. If I wanted to kind of fortify this place, if I wanted to make it stronger, I could move my hoplite into this square space right here, and he would help defend the city. So that's an option, and that's just a one movement too. So it's really as simple as it sounds. I'm gonna take one of my dudes, and I can move them into one region, and we call it good. So as I mentioned, I was probably, with the blue player, gonna to try to take over this blue land, the black land, and the green land. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, why don't we head over this way? It looks like there is a connection to the yellow land. I wanna make sure that I kind of build up there. So I'm going to take this guy and put him here. I don't have two hoplites in this area yet, so I can't claim to control it, but I'm well on my way to being able to do that at some point. So in terms of my regular actions, I've done that thing now once. I can't do it anymore this turn. Now I can move my hero. Remember, the hero movement has to do with speed. And for Heracles, that is a one right now. Okay, so Heracles can move one space Remember that his movement does not contribute to control. So if I put him here, I don't control this region yet. I need to get a second hoplite over here for that to happen. The hero needs to either think about going after a monster, but monsters are really tough to kill. He has an advantage because he's Heracles, so he's super strong, but he needs to get stronger before he really goes after it. And one way to get stronger is to um, go after these different quests. Remember that I pointed out that the aid to Atlas quest uh, is good for people who are strong. So I think that this might be a good thing to do for Heracles. So I'm gonna send him towards this quest right down here. Here, I'll put it right there. So I'm gonna move him one space. Um, again, there can be dangers by going into monster zones, but there aren't immediate consequences. There's just a chance that they could attack us near the end of the round. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to move him here with the intention to come down to this region and work on this quest. Now, we've done hoplite movement, we've done hero movement. Let's talk about prayers. I actually can't do a prayer yet because I don't have any priests on the board. So this is kind of like a pool of priests I don't have access to yet. Uh, there's going to be actions in the game that will put priests onto the board like this. And if they were there and I wanted to do a prayer action, I would basically take this priest and I would put him in any open slot. You can see all of these monument bases have two slots available to them. So let's just say that I chose to put him here with Hermes, okay? The reason why I keep this card kind of poking out is because it's helpful to see that color. And if I put my priest here with Hermes, I would look at this little aid here. I would look for Hermes, and we're at the very base. Every monument has five pieces. We only have one piece on the board right now. So if I do go there, I would gain one speed if I were choosing to do this. And so if I actually was doing this prayer thing, I would be able to raise my speed up by one. So that's how you raise the statistics. That's one of the ways that you raise the statistics is by going over and worshiping at these monuments. If you go worship with Athena, you raise your leadership. If you go worship with Hermes, you raise your speed. And if you worship with Zeus, you're going to raise your strength. So that's the prayer action. And then the artifact action, let's talk about that when we are doing uh, Helen's turn. But for now, I just need to bring this guy back. So, we have now done all of the regular actions that we can. And in this case, we could only do hoplite movement and hero movement because we don't have any priests on the board and we don't have any artifacts. Now, what we need to do is we're going to pick our special actions. So, let me kind of give you a brief overview about these special actions. So, um, here, let's get closer. There we go. Uh, basically, there are seven special actions that we could choose from. And when we do that special action, we're going to just mark that we've done it, and we can't do it anymore until we reset and take all of these markers off. But this first special action is called Prepare. There's three different things listed here, and you get to do two of them. So one thing that we could do is we could heal an injury. Injuries are going to look like this. We're going to have these tokens flipped over, and if we want to, we could heal an injury. 
That would just mean flipping that back. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, we could draw a combat card. So combat cards are going to help us as we battle monsters and as we move our hoplites into each other's place to fight each other. And we could recruit one hoplite into a region with your hero. So I could take one of my hoplites here and add them wherever my hero is. Another thing we could do is hunt. That basically means if your hero is in a space with a monster, you go fight the monster. But it's kind of intense. You could usurp. Um, throughout the game, we're going to be getting tokens that look kind of like this. Uh, here's a real example. So if we end up with one of these tokens, then essentially what we could do is we could go to a region in a matching color and we can uh, take control over it and add one of our hoplites into it and everyone else that's there, all the other hoplites have to get out. So we could usurp that place. That won't happen for a while, so don't worry too much. Basically, we could do some of these basic things. We could fight a monster or we could build a temple. To build a temple, you need to look at the areas you control. So right now we only control Corinthia. And you can see there's a temple right here in the artwork. Now, I think it, like, I like the artwork, but it's a little hard to see these kind of poking out so easily. Um, so I always look at the name of the place, and there's the icon right there. If you see that icon, kind of the two pillars, that's a temple. So if I choose the build temple action, I just take one of these temples from down here, and I'm going to add it, usually standing up, but I'm going to lay them down for this video. It'll make things a lot easier to see. You build a temple, and when you build a temple, you get to add a priest onto your board, and then in the next turn, the priest is available for you to take the prayer action. So that's the uh, importance of building a temple. We'll just put this right back here for now. I probably am going to do this action. Spoiler alert! But really quickly, let's just talk about the other two. There's Recruit. So there are, in the same way that there are regions that have temples on the board, there are regions with these icons that are cities. So this was a region with a temple. I'm trying to take over this region, and you can see right here, this region has a city. It's these ones with the squares on it. They're a little easier to see than the temples are in the artwork. So if you control regions, if I had control over this city over here, then I would be able to recruit more hoplites from off the board and bring them onto the board into that city. For all of the regions that you control with a regular city, you pull two hoplites from, from your play area onto the board, and if you by chance control Sparta, which has this icon, it's camped out over here in Laconia, I did watch Spartacus, but I don't remember, it's been a while, uh, then this one's a special one, you would be able to recruit four people into this spot, but you can see it's really hard to take over. And finally, you can march, which basically means rather than just moving hoplites one at a time, you could grab all of the hoplites from one region and put them into an adjacent region. So you can move all of your hoplites at once. That's the march action. So again, I know that's a brief overview. I've been talking a ton. It's probably overwhelming maybe, um, but just bear with me. We're going to keep going. I'm going to take the build temple action. So I'm going to put a priest onto the board like this. I'm allowed to do this action because I have control of a temple region. I'm going to take this temple. Normally we'd stand it up. I'm just going to pull off the plastic and put it right here and show, hey, cool, we control a region with a temple. And remember, controlling five regions with temples is one of the end game conditions. And now that I've done all my regular actions and I've done one special action, that's going to be the end of the turn. I skipped over the build monument action um, just because it's a little bit crazy, but let's just briefly talk about it and then I'll go into Helen's turn. So whenever somebody takes the build monument action, uh, that's basically like ending the round, essentially. We're going to go back and forth or around the table until someone does a build monument action. And it walks you through it and you can see that there's a lot. Um, but basically, when you do the build monument, all of the players kind of pull stuff from the board back to the top of their play area. So all players remove the priests from the monuments, and then they would put them off the board. They actually don't come back on the board. Uh, and then you would choose any monument, and you add the next piece to it. And then you gain a priest for every temple you control. So for all of those regions where we control a temple, we'll be able to pull a priest back onto the board. And then, after that, all of the players, they're going to clear off all of these X's from the board, so new spaces are going to be are, are going to be available again. But then all of the monsters are going to attack, and we have to deal with an event. So that's kind of the balance. Like, we could obviously be building monuments every single turn if we wanted to, but monsters are going to be attacking, and that can be very, very bad news. So we won't be doing that just yet. But for now, let's thank Heracles for his wonderful turn, and let's go over to Helen's turn, where it will hopefully be just a little bit faster than Heracles' turn was. 
So as we talk about regular actions, just remember, here's our regular action summary over here. Uh, you can basically move your hoplites, you can move your priests, you can move your hero, and you could use an artifact, which Helen actually has. Um, you do not have to do them in this order, but for the first couple of turns, why not? So let's start off. Uh, her leadership is one, and so we're going to move one hoplite, one space. I'm going to go ahead and have her start moving this way. I would have her come around that way, but you can kind of see that that one's going to take four people to take over. I'm not quite that strong just yet, and so I'm going to move one hoplite, one space in this direction. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and move the hero, speed of one right now, and so um, Helen can move one space. And I'm going to bring Helen actually down this way towards the monster. I'm not really planning on fighting the monster right now. That's going to have to wait. But for, for right now, I'm moving her into um, Epirus. I don't have any priests on my board, so I can't pray. And, well, you can pray anytime, people. But I can't do it in this game. And then I do have an artifact, so I could use this. Um, but it says, heal all injuries your hero has suffered. I haven't suffered any injuries, so I don't need to use that artifact. So... I've done all of my regular uh, actions. What I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a prepare special action. So um, the main reason is I, I don't necessarily want to recruit right this second. I could recruit right now because the one area I control does have a temple. So that would be great to get more hoplites on the board. Um, but what I want to do instead is I want to prepare. I'm not going to heal an injury. I'm going to draw a combat card. And it looks like I've got this one here. Bring this back. We haven't even looked at our other combat card yet because we have, I don't, I'm trying to not overwhelm you. Uh, but basically we have these two bows and I'll just read this really quickly. Uh, this says use three combat cards with a bow symbol to deal, well, okay. So uh, we'll talk more about this later, but basically your cards have a few different things. They've got a symbol with a picture. They have some text here and then they have a number and then they have different kind of text down here. Okay, and it kind of depends on where you're using it. This is for monster fighting. This is for fighting other armies, basically. So uh, we've got these two combat cards right here, and they are secret from the other players. They don't get to see those. And now, the reason why I moved Helen where I did is because now we can recruit one hoplite to a region with your hero. So I'm going to grab one of these hoplites and put her up here with Helen. And now I have two hoplites in this space here, which means that I get to add one of my control tokens into that space. I now have control over that. And just a reminder, <clears throat> there will always be a control token here. Even if I move these guys off later on, that's gonna stay there. And then blue could just come take that over if they ended up making it up there. But for now, we have control over those two regions. But for now, that's the end of Helen's turn. Let's go back over to Heracles. So you can kind of see, it, this game takes a long time to explain. There's a ton of stuff going on, but turns are pretty fast. So once again, we're going to start by moving one hoplite, one space. Let's bring this guy right here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because now we have control over Achaia. Neat. All right, so we've got that. And now we're going to go ahead and do our hero movement. I can move him one space, so I'm going to move him down here. Remember, that was my goal, was to kind of get down to this uh, quest. And I'm going to go offer aid to Atlas. So if your hero ends their turn on a quest, then you're going to send that hero up to the quest, assuming you have the uh, requirements. So uh, let's go up there and let's learn about quests. Basically, when you're going to go on a quest, you look at the card, and you want to see which of these levels you actually qualify for. And so right now, I only have two strength on my player board, so I need to go up here. If I had four strength, I would start here. If I had five strength, I would have started down here. Uh, but basically, the better off you are, the stronger you are, the quicker you can do these quests. I'm still kind of weak, and so I need to start off here at space number one. And on future turns, from here on out, I'm going to just move this guy down here until I get to the third spot in which case I get to uh, take the reward. Now, no matter what your speed is, you can still only move one space per turn going down this way. Uh, but as soon as you hit that number three, you're gonna do this reward thing here. So you can see that if I had five strength, which I totally don't, but if I had five strength, I would hop up here, instantly win that reward and come back to the map. But I gotta take some time to do that because I'm not super duper strong just yet. So that's going to be my hero movement. I moved into the region that had a quest, which means I just looked up here and saw what I qualified for. If I only had one strength, I would not have even been able to come up here at all. You have to have, at minimum, uh, that first tier of stuff.
And so if somebody wants to come do this quest here, they would need to have at least two speed. Or down here, this is two speed and have two injuries, two wounds, or three speed and two wounds. So you have to actually be injured to be, you know, sent to clean the stables, is what that's saying. I'll also point out that it is possible for other players to join in on your quest. So you've started a quest, but they have to be able to kind of beat you out. So if Helen, let's say that Helen had four strength right now and could make it to that quest on the map, then she would just pop up over here. And uh, they would kind of, Helen would be the one that would finish this quest first. And so she would kind of punk him out of that quest. But she doesn't have the strength, so I'm not too worried about that. Let me just really quickly point out before I move on here, let me grab that. Uh, you don't have to have these things to move on. So like, in other words, I don't have to wait till Heracles has four strength to move down. These icons only get you started on the quest. After that, you just move down the line, okay? So I just wanted to be clear about that because that was confusing for me the very first time that I played it. And I'll emphasize that again when I move Heracles on his turn. Next up, I could choose to pray if I wanted to, and I actually do want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose uh, to send this priest to one of the monuments. I just have to decide which one I want to go to. Do I? They're all at the base level. Do I want to go get a leadership point that will help me move my... Um, Hoplites, move two hoplites per turn. Do I want to get uh, faster or do I want to be stronger? I think where it's Heracles, I want to focus on getting his strength up so that he can go fight some good monsters and stuff like that. So I'm going to send this guy over to Zeus's monument. So I just plop him into one of these round spaces. And because uh, here at Zeus's, it's only at the base level, all I get is a strength. And you can see that you get more and more stuff as time goes on. So for now, I'm just going to raise my strength. I'm up to a three. I don't have any artifacts, so now it's down to special actions. I think that I want to... Hmm. Okay. As much as I would like to recruit, I kind of want to control more than one city before I do that. So I have some options. I could send these guys towards there. It'll be a little slow, but I could get there eventually. Or I could send these guys down with the monster. That's just a little bit risky if someone decides to end the round and your guys are stuck with a monster. That's a great strategic choice. It's just risky. Um, and again, you end the round by choosing the build a monument action. But it's so early, and also the red player is kind of up there with the monster too. I doubt that they're going to end the round right now. So I'm going to bring these guys down this way using the march action. So remember, the march action says grab a whole army from any region and move them into an adjacent region. And now, all of a sudden, I control this space down here. And the reason why I like this is because when I do the recruit action, probably on my next turn, I'm controlling two cities. So I'm going to be able to bring a total of four hoplites on the board, two in each of those different regions. So that was me taking the march action. And I know I'll explain this later, but I just wanted to be very clear about moving the army. You don't have to grab every figure from a region, but you can choose how many you want. You can't, you don't just, you're not restricted by your leadership number. So if I only wanted to bring one guy down here, that's totally fine. But you just have to grab a number of hoplites from one region and move them into an adjacent region. So I just wanted to make sure that I was clear on that before going to Helen's turn. But now here we are, it's Helen's turn to shine, and she is going to start with her hoplite movement. Her leadership is still at one, so she's just going to be able to move one person for now. And I have a couple of options. One thing I'm considering is moving this one hoplite over there. That's going to need four people to take it over. But if I do a recruit action soon-ish, then I'm going to get two people to send over. But that's still going to be shy of being able to control that. Oh, but it is a temple, which is nice. Um, well, it can be, right? I could build a temple eventually. So, I don't know. Um, my other option is to move a hoplite down into this zone. We've got some good two population zones right here next to each other. This one has a city, this one has a temple. So that's not bad either. It's getting a little close to blue. Um, but those are my two options. I think what I want to do is... I'll, I'll bring these guys down in a little bit. Let's send this hoplite over here. For my hero movement, I could come and attack this monster. There's no chance in heck that I'm strong enough to kill him yet, but I could start to do some damage, but not a lot. And I, I'm waiting a little bit to talk about monster attacking, but basically you want to have a lot of combat cards, and I want to get my strength up first. So I don't really have a goal to send her anywhere right now. 
maybe I should be better about thinking about that, but yeah, okay, I'm gonna keep her there for now because I don't have a better plan. So I'm not gonna move. I don't have any priests right now to pray, and so I can't do that, and I'm not using my artifacts just yet. So that's just going to bring me to my special action. Ah, do I want to build a temple or a recruit? I think I want to, hmm, I'm going to recruit. So I have control over one city and the only way for me to control another city soonish is for me to recruit. So I'm going to grab two hoplites and they're coming up into Macedonia, the only other place that I recruit. So kind of my plan is to try to raise my leadership and send both of those guys or march them over there. Uh, well, something like that. But for now, that's the end of Helen's turn. So here we are back at Heracles' turn, and I just wanted to take a second. I haven't talked about it yet, but each character not only has a starting bonus, uh, but they have a special ability. So I've been avoiding talking about that just for a minute because we're learning stuff. So here we go. His special ability says, at the beginning of your turn, you can remove one glory token. So glory tokens are those, uh, it's too far for me to reach, those hexagonal tokens that you can ruin as a reward sometimes. And so this is saying at the beginning of your turn, you can remove a glory token to draw two neutral artifacts, keep one, and shuffle the other back. So I'll try to keep an eye out for that if and when I get a uh, glory token. Okay, so for his turn, we're going to start with our hoplite movement. While it is tempting to start sending these guys elsewhere, I think, well, maybe I should do that. I'm going to send, well, hmm, maybe I'll do my march action, actually. Okay, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep these guys here. I'm not going to move them at all. And for my hero turn, uh, his movement, I'm just going to move this down one along that quest. Again, I don't need to have four strength to move it down. That's just a starting place. So I'm going to move him down. And no matter what the speed is, you always just move him down once. And I'll also point out that you can never pull a hero off of a quest until they have completed it. So you can't just abandon. Uh, if somebody else sneaks in there and beats you to the punch, you just kind of have to wait it out. I can't do any prayer actions, I don't have any artifacts, so I need to do my special action now. I think what I'll do is, let's go ahead, oh man, I can't have my guys march. I was planning on having them marching. Um, let's go ahead and pre, no, I don't want to prepare yet. Dang it, okay. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and recruit just a little bit earlier than I would have liked to. So I'm going to take the recruit action, which means for all of the regular cities I'm in, I'm going to recruit two hoplites. And um, if I had uh, Sparta, is it Sparta? Yeah, if I had Sparta, I'd be able to recruit four hoplites. But I've only got two that I get to bring to the board now. And so this is the only city that I have control over. Uh, the other one just has this temple, this shrine area. And so I'm just going to bring these two hoplites into that city there. That's going to bring us to Helen's turn. Let's take a second and look at her special ability. So her special ability says that enemy player's hoplites can't enter a region with Helen in it, unless that player's hero is also in that region. So if Helen's sitting in a region, those other players can't march their hoplites into there. So that's pretty good. I want to keep that in mind tactically for keeping those fools at bay. All right, so first of all, hoplite movement. I think what I want to do is I'm going to leave one of these guys here, maybe, and I'm going to bring, because I can still only move one, I'm going to bring one of them up to that spot. For the hero movement, maybe what I'll do is, it's just off camera, but there are some blue hoplites down here. I'm going to start bringing Helen towards here, just to stand here and keep the blue player from coming up that way. That way she can kind of like prepare her guys for uh, coming on in. I don't have any priests to pray with. I don't want to use my artifacts now, so I'm doing my special action. I'm going to go ahead and march. So for the marching action, you probably maybe caught that I was going to do this. I'm going to grab all of these guys, and I'm going to bring them over there, which is going to give us control over that spot. We now have, what is that? chalk kid ik chalk kid ik I'm sure that's right. Back to Heracles, let's start off with our hero movement. That's where I want to go first. So for the hero's movement, we're going to come down here to step three, which means we finish the quest and a couple of things are going to happen. First thing that's going to happen is we're going to earn the glory token for the matching color. So we're in a green region, not because this card is green, but down there on the map, the region is green. I'll point that out again. So we're going to receive that and that's going to help us with our special ability, as I mentioned earlier. And we're going to receive this reward. 
It says, keep this card. At any time, you can discard it to remove all of your used action tokens and draw two combat cards. Oh my gosh, I actually like that and I might be using it now. Um, but we'll, we'll bring this back to our play area, but first let's take this guy back to uh, the board. He's just going to come back on the board wherever that quest was. So I'm going to put him right here. This token just gets removed from the board. I'm just going to throw it up there. And then we're going to bring these back to the play area. And I guess I could keep this here. We're just going to keep this right here. Uh, and I might just actually use these now. So again, this one says that I can uh, discard this card at any time to remove your used action tokens. I kind of, I kind of want to remove these use action tokens. I could take the usurp action, but I'm also kind of wanting to do the march action and then maybe recruit. Oh, it's hard to know. I also know that Helen's going to be, she's going to be probably filling up that money. I don't know how many more things she can do is the thing. Um, since, oh man, that's so hard to say. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the usurp action. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this token and I'm going to be able to control and bring one hoplite into the region where my hero is. Um, oh. The reason why this might not be the smartest plan is probably a smarter plan rather than doing this on a spot with three population. Maybe I should do it on a spot with five population or somewhere where the red player has control, but on the other hand, I don't, oh, let's just do it. We're gonna put this guy here, but also normally I would not be able to add a control token, but that is what usurp does. We're gonna take control of this. If I was doing this in a spot with a city, you could put your hoplite into the city to add to its defense. So just to point that out, and I'm halfway, I'm considering doing this. I'm just looking over at Helen. I'm not sure that she's going to combat or usurp or she'll probably build temples. I just mean this is going to clear out all of the tokens so I can keep doing stuff that I want to do. Um, but the question is, is Helen going to make us clear off the tokens anyway? Uh, let's go ahead and do this anyway so that I can draw two combat cards. So I'm going to discard this card. That's going to let me clear off all of these tokens. And I'll be able to, oops, I'll be able to draw two combat cards. And we haven't even looked at this combat card yet. So what do we got? Oh, some more bows. We saw those earlier. These are more common. And we'll learn more about this again later. But up here, the red part, this is for fighting monsters. Down here, the blue part is for fighting the other player. And um, yes, okay, so we've got two bows and this, I don't, is that a mace? Whatever that is. Okay. Cool. So we've got a bunch of combat. I'm getting ready to go fight a monster, maybe. But either way, that's the end of his turn. So Helen, um, okay, let's start thinking, what is Helen going to do? Let's start with her hero movement. We're going to bring her over here just to keep the blue player from marching across this bridge. So Helen's just going to kind of stand guard right there. Let's bring one hoplite for that movement over this way. There is no connected way. I'm going to have to march those guys down and around unless they come down through this blue area. Maybe that's a better idea, actually. Okay, well, that's something to think about, but I can't really do anything about it right this second. I can't uh, pray or use this artifact, or I'm choosing not to use that artifact because I don't have any injuries, but I would really like to build a temple. So that's going to bring a priest onto the board. I'm going to pick up this second temple. I have to decide where to put it. I do control this shrine right here, and I also control the shrine up there. Could really go in either place. Let's just go ahead and put it on that space over there. Okay, so what I think Heracles is going to do, I, I think I know. Let's bring, him, let's bring this one hoplite, that's the one we can move, up here to this region um, for our hero movement. Kind of the question is, do I come try to fight, um, who is this? This is the Chimera, right? And then, or over here to the cleaning the stables. I can't clean the stables because I'm not injured and I don't have the right speed is kind of, just as a reminder, he'll pull the card out. I either need two speed or two speed, two injuries, or uh, three speed, two injury. I don't have any of that. Um, I could come, oh, this isn't the, who is this fool? This is the... I'm um, looking over there. This is the Cerebrus? No, Chimera. Do I have that labeled right? I don't think I do. No, I do. Okay, so just from this picture, I was getting confused, but if you look at this picture on the back, 
you can see the resemblance there a little bit better. Okay, so just something to keep in mind before we talk about combat is you kind of want to look at these symbols for when you're fighting the monster. And uh, something worth noting here is my combat cards. I do happen to have uh, this symbol over here, and I do have these two bow and arrow symbols as well. Um, so that's good news. This is a very, a very fightable foe. The question I'm going to have to ask myself is, do I do my marching and recruiting now, um, or do I go fight this monster now? Because remember, fighting is uh, a special, like that's the hunt. It's one of the special actions you have to choose. So my question for myself is, am I going to march and then recruit to get a ton of hoplites on the board? That would be awesome to flood the board with that. But my leadership is still so low. Or do I go ahead and hunt? But then it's kind of like making invalid the fact that I wiped off all of those tokens. Uh, I think what I'll do is... Uh, it is time to probably... Let's go ahead and march. Okay, I'm almost ready to go fight. So for my marching, I'm going to take three of these guys. I'm going to leave one guy here, and I'm going to bring these three down here, which is going to give me control of this spot. And now, when I actually go to recruit, I'm going to be able to bring two, two, and two. I'm going to bring six hoplites on the board. That'll be awesome. So I really do need to get over here and fight this monster before too long. Um, I bet Helen, ooh, she might end. she might end the round. We'll see. Okay, the first thing I think Helen's going to do is she is going to send a priest to go pray. And I feel like I really need to get that leadership number out. It's really throttling things. So I'm going to send this priest to worship at Athena's uh, monument. So we're going to go ahead and put that priest right there. And just taking a look down here, oh, for Athena, we just gained one leadership point because we're still down at the bare bones. So we just get a leadership point. But that's good because now I can do my hoplite movement, which means I can move two hoplites. And I'm having a hard time deciding, do I bring two hoplites down here to this region and get control over it? Or do I bring two hoplites down here and then I'm that much closer to controlling that spot with that monument? I think where we're gonna, I know that we're gonna end up fighting over blue eventually. Let's bring these two hoplites down here and we're gonna claim control of this spot of Eobia. That's the place that sounds like the, um, the phrase in Avatar, the movie. And for the hero movement, she could, Helen could come over here and fight Medusa because that's one of the only special actions she has left. Um, but I'm not feeling super prepared to fight Medusa. I think Helen's just going to stand her ground and just, you know, stay right there. We are putting some of her hoplites in some danger, but I think we're going to go ahead and do the build monument action anyway. Kind of... Um, make the blue player feel like they've wasted a card and all of that stuff. So um, what we do is all players are going to remove the priest from all monuments. So we'll just grab these guys. They come off the board into the up here spot like that. And then I know it's on her board, but the next step is to add the next level of chosen monument. So where I think um, Helen is going to really try to get her leadership up. It's probably best that she adds to this leadership one, maybe just to keep the strength from going. So I'm just going to look. This looks like the right piece. It's a bunch of feet. Mostly I was looking kind of at the number of dots. I did label the bottom of this Athena just to make sure I knew. And so I'm just going to go ahead and pick this up, add those feet to that monument. So now this monument is at a level one. Next, it says that we gain priests for every temple you control. The red player controls one temple. That's the one we did last round. And the blue player controls one from really early on in the game. Now, what we need to do is um, all players are going to remove their used action tokens. So we're just going to go ahead and take those off of the board, kind of refreshing everything. I'm not sure if we helped or hurt the blue player. They're going to at least have the ability to march again if they want to. And now we need to go to every single monster on the map and roll the monster die, and then we're going to draw an event card. So let's go to the map. We will start near the top, we'll roll, and we'll talk about what to do. Okay, so what's going to happen is the red player, because the red player chose the build monument action, they're going to actually take this die, and for every single monster on the board, they're going to roll it. And there are basically, basically three things that can happen. Kind of four. All right, so I rolled it off the board. So when you roll this arrow, what that means is you need to move the monster, the player who's rolling the die, has to move the monster to an adjacent region. 
And so let's just bring this monster down here to the this yellow territory. Yeah, we're just going to bring him down here like that. So I know that that wasn't overly exciting, but don't worry, it could get exciting. Let's go to Medusa next. Medusa is right here, so I'm going to grab the die. Another movement. Okay, so let's send Medusa down here into this blue region. We know that the uh, blue player is headed that way, or I know that because it's in my own brain. Okay, next up is this. This is the Minotaur, I think. Yeah. All right, so Minotaur, roll the die. Oh, it's off screen. Okay, so here's what this means. You're going to move the monster and perform an attack. So we need to move that monster somewhere where hopefully the blue player is. Unfortunately, right here, moving up here is only going to hurt us because we're in that zone. Nobody is over here. No one's down here or here. So let's just send him down here to Corinthia. There is no one to attack, but let's just double check the uh, regional attack. It says it right here. So a region attack has that little symbol. We would kill one hoplite if there was a hoplite in the region. And then there's this passive thing that's happening also. Hoplites cannot move out of a region with, oh, I'm looking at Medusa, wrong one. Oh my embarrassing. Okay, here we go. The Minotaur. <clears throat> so the regional attack, we kill one hoplite. The player controlling, uh, the player controlling region with Minotaur must sacrifice one priest. So the, this actually does matter. Right now the blue player, oh, it's off screen. The blue player controls this region, so they have to sacrifice a priest. And that's gone. Okay, let's come up here. This is the Cyclops. We'll roll the die. All right, so that's just one of the regional attacks. That's bad news for the red player. <clears throat> that regional attack says, deal one injury to all heroes in the same region as Cyclops and all neighboring regions. But I don't think that we have any heroes here. There's no hero here. And the neighboring regions, oh, one's way down here, nothing, nothing. Yeah, no, I think, I think we're safe, actually, for the heroes. We really lucked out this early on in the game. Finally, we've got the uh, Cerebrus, right? No, the Chimera. Oh, my gosh. I'll never remember any of these, by the way. Okay, so for these guys, uh, we've got the die. Here it is. Okay, so he's also going to do a regional attack, so let me grab that card. Which says, we kill one hoplite, move Chimera to a region with the highest monument. Alright, so we don't have any hoplites to kill right here in this region. Uh, so we just need to move it over here to the highest monument, which is at Attica. That really sucks for the blue player, because the blue player was going to go hunt that guy. So he still is going to hunt that guy, I think, but it's going to take a couple of turns to get back over into that region. I also wanted to... Oh, sorry for kicking the camera. I also wanted to point out really quickly, I haven't talked about it yet on the video, but each of these monsters... Well, not each of them. Some of these monsters have a passive ability that could come into play, and I've done a terrible job watching it uh, on camera, didn't want to overwhelm people, but it is something worth pointing out right now. Let's just quickly cover these passive abilities in these regions. So, whenever it says a passive ability, that's something that's always happening, and to the best of my knowledge, none of these would have triggered yet. But, for example, Medusa, who's right here, has this passive ability in the region she's in that says hoplites can't move out of a region with Medusa in it. They kind of get frozen in there. But I don't remember ever bringing any hoplites into there, so we're safe for that right now. The Chimera, uh, again, is... Oh, it's this one right here. This one I might have missed. Let's see. If Chimera is in a region with a monument, players cannot send priests to that monument. We haven't done that yet, so we should be good. But for now, I cannot send any priests over here. So that's something important for me to remember. I can't send priests here, and if I end up with hoplites in that region, then no one can come out of it. And none of the other monsters have a passive ability. All right, the very final step of this build monument action is we need to draw an event card. So event cards are up here. Let's just grab one. And it is Cerebrus. Now, if this was a monster that wasn't on the board, we would add it to the board. If this was a quest, we would add it up there in the quest spots. This is a monster that's already on the board. It's Cerebrus, as we've talked about a few times. Well, no, we haven't talked about him. It doesn't matter. But basically, this monster is evolving. He's going to be a little bit tougher to kill. Um, we still haven't fought a monster. I'm really trying to get there. But basically, we have to make an additional attack on him. So all we need to do for now is add this to the bottom of his card, his, his tray, I think they call it. 
So here are my messy trays up here. We're just gonna put this underneath it, probably in that area right there. And now he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different places to hit him. He is a tough guy to kill. But finally, that was the end of Helen's turn. We don't put one of these markers on here. That space is always available because it's always gonna be something that cleans out the other spaces. But we finally finished Helen's turn. So for Heracles, we've got quite a bit of thinking and considering to do, I think. Something I would really, I think what I wanna do, I don't have my priest to send out to pray right now, which really sucks. But what I think might be a good idea is to pull, I have one leadership, so for my hoplite movement, I kinda wanna bring this guy down here and move all of these guys uh, down towards these zones down here. That seems like kind of a smart move to make, probably. I don't know. I kind of want to, I planned on keeping this guy up here so that I could add to that. But maybe if we just came down this way and kind of picked up people and move him that way, that would be smart. So I'm going to move him there for the hoplite movement. I'm sending this guy towards that monster because I really want to fight that monster. And, uh... Yes. All right. So I can't do a prayer. Don't have an artifact. So I'm going to go ahead and do the march action and let's bring these guys down here like that. Right? Yes. Because I can't put them somewhere. I don't have anywhere to put them right now where um, like that I could take somewhere over. So yep, they're just going to have to slowly come down this way. But we're getting kind of close to controlling three full lands. We definitely have all of green. We have one part of blue and we're working on black. Okay, we're gonna get there eventually. So I did that by using the march action. My next turn, I think that I will recruit, um, get a whole bunch of hoplites onto the board, and then after that, I'll be able to take a turn where I can actually hunt and I'll be in the same space as the, uh, the chimera. Next up is Helen. She can't send her priest to that monument with the, um, with the chimera because you can't put those there. That sucks. So I'm just going to hold off on that part. But we can move two. So let's bring these guys across the water over here to that spot. And since blue has abandoned their post down here, I'm going to bring Helen up here. She's going to go ahead and take the prepare action. I'm going to draw a combat card. All right, it's one of those mace thingies, nice. And then we're gonna recruit one hoplite to a region with our hero. That's gonna also give us control. So we got control because we got our fourth guy up here. So now the red player controls all of the red zones. They gotta start making their way down into yellow and blue. So I've used my march, I can't do that. I'll keep that in mind. But what we could do is I'm gonna send my hero, that's my hero movement like that. Um, it's going to take me a while to fill up this spot, isn't it? Why don't we slowly start coming this way until I, and I can't get more leadership right now. That's okay. Uh, do I want to recruit or do I want to build a temple? I think I keep kind of foolishly <laughs> avoiding recruiting because I want to get more and more, but let's build a temple. The temple will let me increase my leadership so I can move more people more quickly. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and build a temple. You're going to see some little flies somehow. My house got covered in small fr fries. <laughs> I wish it was covered in small fries. Flies, Ugh, they're gross. I gotta get some fly paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this temple. We're gonna build it right here, kind of far away from the blue player. We are now in control of two of the five temples we would need to win. But also you're gonna notice that this place that I pulled the temple off of, oh man, it is super shiny, isn't it? Sorry, uh, there we go, it says draft. What that means is, we're going to come up to this Blessings deck and we're going to draw a number of cards equal to the number of players plus one. So I'm going to draw three cards in this case. One, two, three. And basically we're going to draft these cards. The blue player is going to pick one. They get first dibs and then they'll hand the remaining two to around the table. So to the red player, they'll pick the final one and then the other one gets discarded. So let's go back to the blue play area and see what would be best. So here we have weak spot. At the start of a hunt, discard one combat card to deal one wound of any type. That would be awesome. I know that I'm planning on sending this guy into fighting. Add one to your hero speed upon receiving this blessing. Once during a hunt, you can add your speed attribute to the combat card's strength when defending. That's pretty awesome. And here, combat training, when you use the special action prepare, so this one right here, draw one additional combat card. Oh, I like that too. 
Mm, I like I like this one, I think. I'm gonna keep this one here. And we'll hand these over to Red. And Red, oh man, Helen, what do you want? Um let's add to well it mm, let's add to the hero's speed. Okay, and then once during a hunt, you can add your speed. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna add my hero's speed. This will just get discarded out of the game. So with that temple built, here, we'll put that on there. We grab a priest, put him on here. That should have been their second priest, but that monster killed one of them. So rude. Okay, so now it's Helen's turn. I think we're gonna have Helen do... We've gotta kinda of get these guys in to stuff. So I'm gonna bring them down here into this section. They get to move their two hoplites. Helen is, where is she going? I don't even know. Um, let's put her back here to stand guard. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the recruit action. So to recruit, this is gonna go right here. Um, I'm just gonna go start filling the board with a bunch of these guys here. So, it looks like we need to add two people here. If you want to recruit them into the city, you can. I would say, might as well keep that place defended. We need two up here in this city. Uh, sure. And we need two up here. Sure. The reason why I'm saying sure is, if you're going to move a hoplite, you'd have to move them one space out. Um, unless you're doing, if I remember correctly, I'll double check. The march action, you can just grab them and take them. But um, that's why I don't think it's scary. Like, it's not a risk to put them in there. We've got five. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll just get everything nice and recruited and fortified. So I'll also take a second and point out that only one of Helen's hoplites has not been recruited. Had I needed more hoplites to put out on the board, um, you can only put out what you've got. And you can't move hoplites, like you can't take a hoplite out of one region to put it in a new region that you're recruiting into. So bear in mind that that is fun. Okay, so for the blue player's turn, they're going to go... Uh, oh, my leadership isn't raised, is it? Okay. Oh, and I can't, okay, I can move here, but I can't hunt, which means I can't pray. Well, I can hunt, but if I do hunt, I can't pray, because the hunt would have to come after the prayer. Okay, so I, mo I know that I'm moving that there. I could, I guess I could keep slowly moving people over this way. Yeah, okay, I have a secondary plan. Yeah, I'm going to move that guy here. Um, let's go ahead and... I'll use the prayer action to get my strength up. So strength is going up by one. Zeus is still in its base stage, so that's that. And finally, we are going to go on a hunt. So <clears throat> what we've got is we have Her Heracles, not Hermes, is going to come over here and he is going to fight this fool. To perform this fight, we're going to need this deck of cards, monster attack cards. So I'm just going to grab it and we're going to bring it over here next to the monster card. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this right over here. The red player is gonna be using those during the blue player's turn. And what we've got is over here, on the other side of this is a help. Uh, this is a guy that's gonna help us on our hunt. So I'm gonna keep this close by. I'm also gonna go ahead and grab the blue player's combat cards. So we've got this here. All right, time to learn how to hunt a monster. So uh, something to notice here is that um, we have a reward, that's gonna be the artifact card thing. Uh, we have a bunch of these spaces, four of these spaces here. Most of them are blank in red. Sometimes they have like a blue or I think a yellow, sometimes um, reward right here if you make damage happen right there. So first of all, let's just go ahead and read the card and I'll show you that there is kind of a synopsis here. We are going after the weakest of the monsters and as we said, the Cerebrus monster was the strongest and it's still the strongest er now. Okay, here we go, we're gonna go on a hunt. You, uh, it says here at the beginning, you need to deal at least one wound to the monster. If not, the hunt ends immediately. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our cards and uh, we're gonna play our cards. But before that, I totally forgot, and then I thought it said it on the aid, but it doesn't, is at the beginning of a hunt, you need to look at your strength number and you're gonna draw combat cards equal to your strength number. That's why I was working so hard to get that strength up. So I'm gonna draw four combat cards from the board. One, two, three, four, and let's add it to the other cards that we've got. 
So, <laughs> I know that's a lot of cards to get at once. Specifically, just focus on these icons right here for now. We already know that these icons were good. Um, I need two bows. I need this one mace-like thing, and I did not quite get the axe that I was hoping to get. Um, but that's okay. We're, we might have other options or other ways around that. Okay, so first thing we do is we need to deal at least one wound to the monster. If not, the hunt is going to end. So what I'm going to do is I have all of these combat cards over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just deal three wounds right now. Might as well. So I'm going to discard cards with icons that are the same icons here. And, oh my gosh, one thing that I didn't even pull out. Yeah, I did. And set up. I kept them way over here are these uh, damaged cubes. Uh, this monster can at most take four damage, so I'm just going to grab these two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and discard these three because they're matching these. I could just choose to discard one if I wanted to, or I could go for all three. I mean, there's different strategies and different reasons, but I'm just going to go ahead and discard these cards, and for each of those matching icons, I'm going to do this. Okay, This means that because I did this damage, I'm going to gain a priest at the end of this hunt. Next step. It says that the player on your left is going to uh, is going to play. Sorry, the player on your left plays one of two drawn monster cards. So the red player is going to draw these two monster cards here, and they're going to pick one of them to play. Usually, the scarier, stronger one. So here, this is going to be an attack of four, and if it goes through, it's going to deal two injuries. This is an attack of five. It's going to deal one injury and discard one combat card at random if we can't defend against it. So I think the red player is going to play this one down. It's a little stronger, and they're going to just discard the other card just off screen. The next step is, it says, if you can defend yourself, you don't have to, by playing combat cards with power at least equal to the monster card's power. That's great. So if, And then it will talk us through other things. So looking at our combat cards that we still have left, I need to see if I can match or beat five, which I definitely can do. I think I would probably get rid of... Um, oh man, it's tough. So some of these combat cards have these powers. Use three combat cards with a torch to deal a wound of any type. So these are the types of wounds. If I can get three of these torches, I could play them all down to get a damage there. Um, this is just a four, right? And it's a spear, so that's not going to help us. Um, oh, but I don't really want to get rid of that one. So use two combat cards with the mace symbol to deal a wound of any type. I've already discarded the other one. Okay, what I think I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and play... Oh, it's either, do I do the four and the one or the two and the three? I think I'll do the four and the one. So I'm just going to go ahead and discard these cards to defend against that attack so that I don't die. And it says, if you did defend, we're going to draw two combat cards, and then we're going to repeat this over and over until either we kill the monster or until I decide to stop hunting, if I can't deal any wounds. So I'm going to draw two combat cards. Oh man, we got another torch. Okay. Uh, so the problem here is that I can't do another damage to this guy. I don't have three combat cards like that. Um, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, and I need to use two combat cards with the mace. I don't have those, so I'm going to have to call the hunt, the hunt over. We did not kill the guy, but we're still going to get this reward. We just won't get this reward for having killed him. So that was monster combat, basically. Sometimes it goes several times. Like, I could have, if I was being smart, maybe, I could have just kind of done one attack at a time, but then you have to discard cards to defend yourself and all of that stuff. Let's just quickly talk about what happens. If you didn't defend, uh, follow the monster attack card text and draw one combat card. If you were to receive a fourth injury, uh, end the hunt immediately. So what happens now is I'm going to do a little cleanup where we keep the injury tokens on that monster. You remember that I gain a priest because I added a wound to that uh, particular part of the monster, which is cool. And I'm going to bring all of my combat cards back that I didn't use. And I'm going to take an injury. So when you take an injury, an injury happens if you end a hunt without killing the monster. Um, if you can, take one. And you're basically going to choose one of these, and you're going to flip it over upside down so that it's a one until you fix it. I don't plan on going fast anytime soon, so let's go ahead and make that one a one. And yes, so my speed is a one until I heal that wound. And you can heal your wound from preparing or from other things like that. So 
That was our attempted hunt. We didn't quite kill the guy, but we did a lot of damage, and uh, hopefully Helen doesn't go kill him. I don't think she can, though. All right, so with all of that malarkey over, let's go ahead and take Helen's turn. I want to start off by bringing two hoplites. I'm going to move two hoplites. Ooh, do I come down this way? Medusa's scary, though, and they would get stuck here with Medusa. Let's bring these guys down here. They'll kind of spread out. Yeah, let's go here and take control of that area. For the hero movement, nobody's coming over here, so I'm going to go ahead and I don't have any injuries. That's okay. Let's go clean the stables. She's bored, right? So she gets to move two, one, two, because that's what her speed is, and she's going to come up here to this quest at the two speed spot. I'm also going to, while we're here, grab this priest. Uh, let's get her strength up. Since Heracles is not doing his duty as a real man and killing that monster. Um, yeah, we won't wait for that any longer. Okay, so we go ahead and get that strength up. Not healing anything right now. We're good with this card here. It's going to be very possible that I totally forget that that card exists. And let's build a temple. Yes, yes. Let's go ahead and build a temple uh, now. Because that will get us a priest. It's going to get us first pick on this draft here in just a second, and we'll put this up here. Keep it pretty far away from the blue player. Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll just go right here. Okay, so now it is time for Heracles to take a turn. I'm so mad because I, I, can, no, I can probably go kill that monster, but I've already used my hunt action. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's, obviously, let's start with the regular actions. Um, I'm kind of thinking I want to keep I want to keep these guys here is my thought and my plan in my heart. And the reason why I want to do that is because when I add two more people, then I can march and move over here. I'm missing a guy here. Oh man, but Heracles, I want to get Heracles right here, but that's gonna take two movements no matter how I go unless... Oh, I was going to say, unless I send my priest to raise my speed, but it's still going to be a one because that's where I put my injury. Dag nabbit. I guess it wouldn't be a terrible idea to get him out there anyway, so I am going to raise my speed. I think I'm allowed to do this. It's still going to be at a one, but we can raise it for later. So this guy's going to go right here. I really wanted to raise my strength. Oh, it's just off camera, but both, both of the slots are taken up for the strength, and we still can't come over here because I didn't kill that monster last time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's move him over here, and I don't see any need to move any of my hoplites right now. I was going to do the recruit action, and I probably should, but I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do it next time. Let's prepare, because I want to use the special ability. So instead of drawing uh, one combat card, I'm going to draw two combat cards, and I think I want to... Um, oh, man... I think I'd, uh, I should probably heal the injury, but I want to recruit Hoplite. Maybe I don't draw combat cards. Okay, I'm going to not draw combat cards because I want to heal this so that next time I can move two, and I'm going to recruit a Hoplite into my region. So he's coming here, and then I'm going to next turn send him down here to take control of that, and then recruit and have probably everybody end up on the board. Over to Helen's turn. Let's start with her movement, because we know what that's going to be. So I'll just pull her down one, like that. Uh, next up, let's just bring these two hoplites over here for that hoplite movement. So we have control over this. Uh, we're getting a pretty good grasp on places, in theory. Uh, I, think, I think we should be proud of ourselves, guys. I could send this priest out to pray, but I kind of want to hold on to them a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and take the march action. And we have a few reasonable options. I'm having a hard time knowing exactly what it is I want to do. I kind of want to bring these hoplites down here with Medusa, but once they're there, they're going to be stuck until Medusa leaves. So, I mean, that is an option. My other option is bring this group. Ideally, I could just pop those guys over there with this march action, but they, they're they going to take a little bit longer to get in there. Um, but maybe that's what we do anyway. Again, I don't want to get those guys stuck just yet. Hopefully we can get Medusa moved somewhere else. So let's bring these guys down here like that. Yes, yes. Okay, back to Heracles and his turn. 
he's going to put this guy down here that will give us control of this area so that's his hoplite movement uh maybe i send him back over to prepare to hunt in a in a jiffer and now i can go ahead and recruit i'm pretty sure we're going to be able to get all of these guys on the board i think i'll just grab them just in case Whoop! We'll, oh there we go or maybe not maybe i'm not as cool as i thought that i was but i can put two here I know I can get two over here. We can get two here. Two here. And, oh, that just leaves one guy. I don't think I missed anywhere. That's a temple. Yeah, I think we're okay. So there's that little fella. For Helen, let's go ahead and finish up her quest. So let's go ahead and bring her down here to part three. Let's take a look at this. Our reward, keep this card, discard it to play two special actions in a turn instead of one. I like it a lot. We're gonna bring her down. So she's gonna go right here. We can get rid of this. And we need to pick up the glory token, which is in the green region. If the blue player hadn't used this glory token yet, we would take it from him. So just FYI, we'll bring these back to the play area. Sue, we'll put her here. We've got this glory token. Okay, and I don't think I want to use this action right now. Uh, we could use Serp, actually. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Well, hmm, she's far away. But it would kick the blue player out of the green region. So you always use Serp where your hero is. Um, so this is a possibility. I could discard that glory token, take these guys out, take control, and put my hoplite into this spot. The problem is he's so strong over here that I don't think that that's a super great idea. Um, even though he has total control of the green region right now, he's really close to getting black and um, kind of close to getting blue, but I just think that that's a little too dangerous probably. I'm not really in a position to hunt, so let's do the build monument action. So we're gonna go ahead and just return the priests, uh, grab them from the monuments and bring them back. So that's these two blue ones and the red one and the blue. And there's that. Oops. Here, I'll knock them all over just to be fair. Next step is add uh, the next level to a chosen monument. I know it's a little silly. I think I'm going to keep adding to Athena because I know that that guy's almost dead, even though it's surrounded by all of these scary guys. So I'm just going to grab these legs. I'm going to keep building on Athena because I really intend to go pray there uh, soon. Oh, I can do this. Oh, we can do hard things, everybody. We can. Uh, oh, it helps if you put it on the right way. It does. Okay, there's that and that. All right. So Athena is at level two. So next up is gain priests uh, for every temple you control. We control two temples, so we get two priests. And I think I did this wrong last time. Uh, only the person taking this action actually gets the priest. I think I gave the blue player a priest last time. I'm not sure, but if I did, I'll annotate it. Uh, yeah, so we've got three priests here. And then everybody's going to clear off their tokens. And now it's time to go see what the monsters are going to do. Let's start off with this guy. This is the Chimera. No, Cerebrus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Whatever. We're rolling. Okay, so this is the regional attack. And that regional attack says kill three hoplites in the region. That's why it's a regional attack. So we don't need to do that. Next up, let's do the Cyclops. All right, his regional attack says, deal one injury to all heroes in the same region as the Cyclops and all neighboring regions. I uh, don't think any heroes are in that region or neighboring. This one's not neighboring, it's not connected from those dotted lines, so Heracles is safe there. Okay, next up is Medusa. Whoa. All right, so Medusa's just going to move, which is very helpful because we really needed her to move. Uh, let's put her right here, kind of in the middle of the blues. Cut all of the all of these blue guys are going to be cut off from coming up over here as long as Medusa is alive and down here. So that'll be a good thing. Uh, okay, so we've got the Minotaur next. Okay, so we got to move him. Let's move him over here. No, let's move him down here with all of these guys. And then finally, we've got the, uh, that one's, no, I did Chimera earlier, right? Hold on. No, that was Cerebrus. This is Chimera, Chimera, 
whatever. Okay, so they're going to move and attack. So where do I move him? I have to be kind of careful here because he has those wounds on there. Uh, but we're going to move him, and then he's going to kill a hoplite, move the chimera back to where he was before. So I just got to move him somewhere where he's going to kill a hoplite. Um, an adjacent region. Oh, man, there are no hoplites adjacent. So move him here, and then he's going to come right back here and keep blocking that off. And call me crazy, but I do think we got everyone taken care of, I think. So that's going to bring us to the events. All right, the events. Oh, the Minotaur got stronger. So at the start of a hunt, you must have at least one priest in your priest pool to hunt the Minotaur. So I'm just going to add this. It's off camera, but I'm just going to add that to his um, big card. So that was the end of Helen's turn. Once again, we had a pretty lucky non non-damaging monster thing happen there. So we're good there. But it is time for Heracles to take his turn. It does kind of suck that we're like throttled right here. That was a good move on Helen's part. We would have to come down this way. Our leadership is still only one. Um, I got these five to bring this way probably. Yeah. So I'm just going to send one guy down here. Okay. There's a lot of things that I want to do, but I think what we're going to do is hunt. I want to finish killing that fool. Now, a couple of things. I had to look up really quickly. I don't think I've broken this rule yet, but there's there's a mistake that I've made. Uh, there is hidden in the rule book a combat card hand limit of four while you're not on a hunt. While you're on a hunt, that rule doesn't apply. But normally, you can only have four cards in your hand at a given time. So uh, I don't think that I've broken that rule just yet, but it's something I should have mentioned forever ago. And I'll probably put subtitles somewhere just to point it out um, because I just didn't think about it. So we can have at most four combat cards in your hand while not hunting. The other thing is that I was looking something up online just barely. And when you do the usurp action, you don't actually discard the token. And so I will annotate that because I think that I did that when I usurped with Heracles before. But you don't discard the token, you just have the token, take the action. As long as you have that token, you can usurp in um, those areas. So I just wanted to point these things out, um, and I will be more conscious of that. The rule book is pretty good, but there are some things that are kind of hidden in globs of information. But yeah, okay, so for now, let's go see if we can finish the hunt. So the first thing I need to do is draw four combat cards. So we got, now we're obviously more than four. I was just looking for one symbol. <laughs> I hope I can find it. Uh, yes, okay, it was this symbol that I actually needed. We're gonna end up having to discard down, but that's okay, because we can discard down wisely. So I'll bring these up to the play area. And this is gonna be super straightforward, but just remember, first step of a hunt, after you draw your cards is, you need to deal at least, whoa, you need to deal at least one damage. The only damage that we could deal is this guy right here. And so, well, maybe I want to hold on to that. Let's see if we have any of those. Use two combat cards with the mace. Like, if I could get rid of, if I have three torches, oh, I do have three torches. Maybe that's what I should get rid of instead and hold on to that mace. So, use three combat cards with a torch symbol to deal a wound of any type. That's what we're going to do instead so that I don't have to discard so many cards. So, we're going to go ahead and discard these three torches. That's going to do a wound. I don't, oh, here's the cube right there. And with that, we have killed the uh, the monster. So when you finish a hunt, uh, let me just point out that we did not deal damage right here. Uh, so like we don't get that priest. So when you finish a hunt, you get to choose a reward. So this reward is going to be, I could choose from this one. Or if I had done this damage right here, I could choose to get a priest or get this thing over here for killing him. Uh, you get to choose one reward is my best understanding of that. So here we go. Uh, this, I'm going to obviously take this one because I didn't earn a reward during this hunt. So I can kill one hoplite in a region your hero is in. Cool. Okay, so we've got this. This is an artifact we can use at any time. And we also get the blue glory token because that was in a blue spot. So we don't get a green one. We don't get to take it from the other player. We get a blue one. And we also get to collect this corpse as a trophy. So we have one of three monsters needed to win the game. Let's bring our combat cards back. I think we just discard down. Let's just keep our high numbers. Oh, we got lots of high numbers. Okay, we're keeping these two. And we'll keep these two. I think, yeah. 
I could probably be more tactical in my choosing, but I just wanna get it over with. There we go. Okay, we've got our four hand limit combat cards back. So now it's Helen's turn. I see a couple of maybe smart things that we could do as we kind of try to sneak up on the blue player. I think that we could do that could be fun, maybe. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna see if I can sneak up on the blue player and get the five temple victory. I don't think I can do it this turn, but I do think I could do it soon. We've got one, two temples here. I could build a temple right here for my third temple. And if I could sneak in here, I could get these two temples here. One of those I could get through the usurp action. The other one, I think we could get if we just sneak our guys in there. And I could maybe use Helen to kind of block the hoplite from entering into a space. So that's kind of where my head is at right now. Um, and here's how I, th well, okay. Another option is the uh, Oracle of Delphi. Delphi is right here. So what I think I'm gonna do for my movement, I was gonna push these guys this way, but I'm liking this plan even better. I'm gonna bring these two this way. And, oh, no, 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 okay, hold on. Before I do that, this is gonna be even better. Oh my gosh. I actually think this could work. Not this turn, maybe next turn if the blue player is not watching carefully. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a priest over here to this temple. It is, uh, it has three pieces together. So for Athena, that means that we can recruit two hoplites to any of your regions. Perfect. I don't have two hoplites, I only have one, but that's what I need. Okay, so I've got one hoplite right here. Oh, I'm gonna need that hoplite though. <sighs> Crap, maybe this isn't gonna work, oh. No, yeah, okay, I think I am gonna do that. Then, so that was my priest action. Now I'm gonna move two hoplites over here for now. Next, what I wanna do is, um, uh, okay, I'm gonna move I'm gonna move Helen down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold off on the usurp action just for a second. I think that's what I'm not gonna do, but I am gonna use this to do two special actions instead of one. I'm gonna do the march action, and then I'm gonna do the build temple action. So I'm gonna march these guys down here. That's gonna give me control of, what is that? Focus, <laughs> sure. And then I'm going to build a temple, and this is the Oracle of Delphi uh, special thing. So instead of grabbing a normal temple, I'm going to grab this one, and I get to draw combat cards up to your combat cards limit, which is the number four. Uh, so I'm just going to pull this plastic off. And up here, we control three temples right now, but I am very close to controlling four. I just have to be careful and stand my ground and make sure that I have people there to protect me. And that's gonna happen, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna be able to usurp, and I need to be able to build another temple. I only have three combat cards, my limit is four, so let's just grab another one. Oh, that's a pretty good one, okay, cool. So let's hold on to those. Obviously the blue players figured out what I'm doing because I am the blue player. Um, and if by chance I don't do player versus player combat during the game, I will do an example of player versus player combat uh, at the end of the video if by chance we don't get to see it. So to stop us, the blue player cannot send any hoplites down here because that's Helen's special ability unless um, Heracles is there but he can't make it over there. So what he's going to do is he's going to send this guy over here that is going to add, oops, a blue control token. They are so close to controlling black, they need this space down here. Tons of people that he can march into here. Um, he is super close to controlling blue. He just has to get, well, he has to get these three zones, one of which is controlled by the red player, but this probably is his best shot. He could go fight, like he could go fight Medusa maybe. Um, that's possible, but he can't actually use the hunt action until he clears off his board. Ooh, okay. So what I think he's gonna do is I'm gonna have him stay here, and then he's gonna end up usurping this spot. And then later on, I'm gonna march people down here. That will get us all of the black spaces. So let's do go ahead and march right now. We are gonna bring all five of these guys down here, 
And now we have control over, I think this is called Sparta, something fancy, but it, you can see it's a super special city. It adds two to your defense, but either way, we have control over it. So now we control all of green, we control all of black. Uh, the red player is going to try to stop that. We're two, oh, more, well, we're close to being two spaces away from controlling blue. Okay, so Helen is going to need to be able to build a temple and also usurp. That's okay, we can do that. Unfortunately, it is going to take a couple of turns because I don't have any special actions that's going to let me, um, like, take two actions like we did last time. That was, that was really awesome. So what we need to do instead is, oh, we've got to take, okay, could we take it over? There's nobody over here. Oh, but there's nobody here either. Crap. Okay, um, let's start moving in. We go here. I just realized that I totally forgot to uh, raise up my leadership for that one prayer action. Oops. But let me just move a third guy. Well, let's put this guy in here as a, no, let's move a third guy in. Okay, so that's that movement. So that's our hoplite movement. We now took control over this spot and then maybe we can move into here. And I'm gonna keep Helen in this spot. And again, I'm not gonna discard this, but we will do the usurp action. I don't have any hoplites to bring in. There's been a lot of debate about this. The debate has been a little bit about, can you do the usurp action if you don't have a hoplite to go there? And my answer, my thought is yes, because the rule book says you can recruit a hoplite. I don't have any hoplites that I can recruit, but I can still take this action. I've got this, I'm in green. I'm gonna go ahead and take control of uh, Messenia. This is our fourth temple that we control. And we're relatively safe because these guys can't come in here because that's Helen's ability. Heracles is in trouble. I'm trying to figure out how to get him out of it, and I don't know that I have an answer to that. Helen has two options, but both of which are going to be postponed, maybe, unless there's a fight. So I think that the only thing <laughs> that the blue player can really do is try to uh, stand their ground at this temple, because that's the only way that Helen's going to be able to win. If she can control this zone, that's her five temples. Otherwise, she's going to have to do a build monument action first, and then she's going to have to build a temple after that. So I can only move, oh my gosh, I can only move one hoplite, can't I? Okay, so I'm going to move a hoplite here. Uh, that's great. And then I'm going to move Heracles over here. And I'm doing that because I want to do the prepare action. So here's the trick. When you do the prepare action, I haven't really done this. You can choose the same action twice. So my question is, do I recruit two hoplites into their region with Heracles, or do I draw two combat cards? Well, my limit is four. I've already got four. Okay, so I'm gonna do this and bring in, oh, I don't have two hoplites, I only have one. Crap. And I can draw a combat card, but then I'm gonna have to discard down. All right, I think, I, hold on. Give me a second, I need to triple check, make sure that I can draw a combat card. Okay, I'm back, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can draw another one, I just need to keep strong ones. And strength also has to do with these special abilities down here, but I wanna focus on the numbers. Okay, let's get rid of one of these bows and arrows. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay, we're getting rid of that one. I've still got four combat cards, we should be in good shape. Let's bring this guy on kind of abandoning my usurp plan, but I kind of have to, uh, because we have to defend this spot here. We're gonna get a battle in, yay! Okay, so that was Heracles' turn. For Helen's turn, we're gonna do what we said. We're gonna bring these three in to attack. So these three guys are coming in here. Let me just kind of move Medusa out of the way a little bit. And this is kind of like a hoplite versus hoplite thing uh, for the most part. So on the back of our player turn action cards are steps on how to figure out your army strength. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do is we are gonna look at this in a second. We're gonna compare army strengths at the end of our battle. And the battle is gonna be using our combat cards that are in our hand. So I'm gonna put the red combat cards up here. I'm gonna put the blue ones. This is gonna be so messy. Um, here-ish. I'm going to try so hard to make this usable. And essentially, what happens is when you move your hoplites into the area, so that could be after a march, it could be after you move your hoplites just like we did, whatever it is, then a battle is going to start. 
So basically what's going to happen is each player, starting with the defending player, is going to play a combat card down. And right now, you're going to essentially be adding up your, your army battle score, your army strength, as you go. So right now, the red player has a strength of three because each of these hoplites is worth one. The blue player has two because each of those are worth one. If this battle was happening in one of these cities where someone was standing here, like this hoplite would be worth two because he's one plus one to act as a defender. Okay, hopefully that's semi-clear. So the blue player is going to look at his combat cards, and mostly he's looking at the number. But also he's going to look at the special ability in blue. So let's look at this one for example. This says, if you have more hoplites than your opponent in this battle, add two to your army strength. The other thing you're going to notice are these red icons. At the end of the battle, you're going to be killing off hoplites equal to this number. So no matter which card we're going to be playing, we're going to be losing hoplites in this battle. So, that card, special ability, is not going to help us at all. So, let's just play one of these threes. Okay, so that's the blue player. He puts down a combat card. Now it's the red player's turn to play down a combat card. So they're going to look. We have a lot of special abilities here, so let's look at those. If you have a glory token for the land in which this battle is being fought, the red player doesn't because they have green. They have the green glory token. Add three to your army strength. Okay, that's not helpful, but it doesn't kill anyone. If you have more hoplites uh, than your opponent in this battle, add two to your army strength. We do, so that's going to be an army strength of four by playing that. If your hero's leadership is greater than the enemy's hero's leadership, add two. We do have that, so this card is worth four. This card is worth four because it's awesome. And then we have, uh, we're back to the beginning. So let's start off with, well, these cards are worth four and they don't kill that many. Okay, so let's start off by playing this one. So right now, the blue player's army strength, I know this is kind of messy, normally you would not be playing it on the board like this, but I'm trying to make it semi-clear. So right now the blue player is 2, 3, 4, 5. The red player is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then the blue player needs to decide, are they going to play more combat cards or pass? Well, they have to keep going or else they're going to lose the game. So they'll play another 3. Okay, so they're up to 6, 7, 8. Next up is the red player, and right now they're being beat by one, so they've definitely got to play something. Uh, let's play this charge. Okay, so now the red player is, oops, put that upside down to be more clear. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. No, that was eight, nine, 10, 11. So right now we're at 11 to eight. So then the blue player is like, oh yeah, I've got to add more cards. Okay, so then they add another three. And again, they could pass at any time, but once you pass, you have to stop. And uh, then essentially the battle ends when both players have passed. Um, and so right now they're at 11 to 11, if I remember correctly. So then these guys are like, well, let's play another one. They're up to 15. Blue player can't just stop or else they're going to lose the game. So they're going to play this two. And so they're at uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. They maybe would stop if they knew that the game was going to continue, right? So they could hold on to some combat cards, but they'll just put it all out there. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 for the blue player. The red player is at, uh, what? Are, I think I said 15, right? So that was 8, that's 12, 13, 14, 15. The, blue, the red player does not need to play another combat card. They're going to pass. Blue player has to pass. So then we count up our number. So, oops, that's what this card does. Plus one for each hoplite in the battle. Plus two for the hoplites in the fortified cities. Or plus three if you were in Sparta down there. Um, if there were blessing cards that we were playing, uh, then we would use those. But I don't think that we're using any blessing cards in this combat. Um, and then... Artifact cards get added also, and then remember that you count your army strength after both players finish playing their combat cards. They both pass. So we did finish. It was a red victory, and now players need to kill off hoplites equal to the number of death symbols. So, oh, in fact, actually, oh, I got to think of this out because I got to keep one guy there. So the thing that I forgot to mention, I got to be careful about, and rethink really fast is if you win a battle so if the attacker wins a battle but does not have enough hoplites on the board they can't take over the region blue would still have control so let me rethink this so uh uh 
have to keep one guy alive. Can I have, would I have won if I had done this? I'm totally cheating right now, but we're learning how to combat. Okay, so this guy was at 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. These guys are at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh no, they can't win that. Oh no, I didn't think that through. Boogers. Okay, so I'll just go back to the way that it was. Oh man, I thought for sure. Okay, so blue is going to kill off these hoplites. Red has to kill off their three hoplites. The loser of the battle, so blue in this example, would have to lose an additional hoplite if there was more to lose. And if they had um, more people alive in the region, um, they would have to retreat to their nearest connected, like they'd have to get to their nearest um, region as long as it's connected. Otherwise, if they, if they were kind of isolated, if there was nowhere for them to retreat to, they would die as well. But that was crazy. Okay, so all of these combat cards get lost. Red did not take over that spot because they lost all of their hoplites as well. But we can bring this one combat card uh, back over to them. So we will <laughs> hold on to that right there. Dang it, I'm so mad at myself. I just didn't think about that. But I, oh man. Okay, well that was just our hoplite movement. We haven't done anything else just yet. Because, oh, do you know what? I think we can do this. I think we can do this. Okay, I'm going to move Helen. She gets to move twice. Uh, one, yes. She, okay, we've got it. So among all this carnage, Helen goes, hi, one, two. And then she is going to go ahead and recruit two hoplites. Why not? And by putting these guys here, there's no one here to defend. There's no hoplites. So we're just going to take off that token and put this one in its spot. So that was Lords of Hellas. We're going to give victory to the red player because they control one, two, three, four, five temples. That was honestly a surprise for me. I wasn't really planning on doing that. It just kind of happened after this quest and I noticed it was a possibility. Uh, two things I want to mention. Number one, I was double checking the rule book for a thing and I noticed a two player rule that I forgot and I will mention it. I'll, I'll annotate it. But in a two player game, when you do the build monument action, you can actually do another action before you do that one. So like you could do another one of your special actions even if you've already done it before. So that could have helped a couple people in a few places I know for sure, um, but I just wanted to mention it. I will annotate that. That's a special two player rule kind of tucked away in the back of the rule book. I also wanted to talk really quickly about the, the monument activation victory condition that doesn't happen with a two-player game obviously because it takes such a long time for you to build up the monuments now is even focusing on one monument but let's say that we finished this monument okay so i'm going to go ahead and let's build um, um let's build athena right there okay so we finished building the monument what happens at that point is this is part of the build monument action let's say the red player finishes that monument you would bring this monument activation card somewhere near the board and the red player would take three of their um, tokens, their used action tokens, because they clear off their board, and they would lay them out on here like this. And every time that they take an action, they're going to pull a token from here. And remember that it isn't the person that finishes the monument that could win the game, it's whoever controls this region of the finished monument at the end of the third round. That's the person who would win. So the idea is that this monument gets completed and everyone probably rushes over there to try to take control over that, um, that space. So that is the monument activation and that is how we play Lords of Hellas. I realized that I didn't do the greatest job um, teaching you a lot of the details of the game. We didn't get a lot of good monster fighting, um, and we definitely didn't get a lot of combat. Not enough, and I was probably not super clear. In a two-player game where, where I set up, like I think probably sometimes people would set up close to one another, but where I wanted us to learn the rules of the game, I kind of set up far away and started just expanding there and so on. So I, hopefully we had enough exposure to it that we could figure it out um, or, or hop into the rule book. The rule book is well laid out for the most part. It's easy to find the things that you want to find. So that was Lords of Hellas, a two-player game. A pretty good two-player experience for this kind of game, I think. Um, they do make enough changes to where they tighten things up quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't... I don't know that I like this game more than I like Blood Rage, but I truly love Blood Rage. Blood Rage has a ton of tension, 
and especially now, maybe I wasn't feeling the tension so much as I was playing this game because I know all of the combat cards that I was about to play and things like that. Um, but it is a really cool game and there are cool things about it. I like having the regular actions and then the special action and the way that you can only use one special action until they reset and resetting those special actions has some consequences to it. You know, those monsters didn't do a ton of damage to us mostly because I wasn't paying super close attention to them and the way that they could attack other people, but they are there and it's something that where when you're playing only one team and you're versus other people, you can really move those monsters around to screw people over. A good example of the monster thing I think was this Medusa, putting Medusa there to kind of um, keep people from wanting to go in there because they would get stuck and not be able to leave. But yeah, that was Lords of Hellas. If you caught mistakes, please leave me a timestamp. I'm happy to address that. I know for sure that I made mistakes because I've even talked about those mistakes that I've made and I'm sure that there are more in there. Um, but hopefully that was a pretty good um, overview and you can have a, a feel for what this game is supposed to play like. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go ahead and make a teaching tips video if you're interested in that. That uh, link will be in the description of this video for sure. Thank you guys again for watching um, and I'll see you later. Okay, bye.